Okay, so today I want to talk about the power of silence. It's something that we don't hear often. And it's something that I've been more and more convinced of as I just go through all my stylistic differences. Uh, I come from a Baptist background. It's much different than the Pentecostal background. And I've been wrestling with this kind of tension between uh, ecstatic, loud expression and these moments of silence and, and how God works in both of those. So I want to read to you a passage from Exodus, Exodus 14, uh, verses 13 through 14. It says, uh, so just kind of set the stage. This is where the Israelites are being rescued from Egypt. They're being rescued from their bondage. They have wandered out and are being led by God. And they've come to the Red Sea. And Pharaoh has been, his heart has been hardened. And he's taken off in pursuit of them. And they have nowhere to go. They're back in the corner. And the Egyptians are pressing in on them. And so in this moment, this is what Moses says to the people. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. The next verse says, The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? <clears throat> Tell the people of Israel to go forward. So in this moment where there is anxiety and there's pressure and the Israelites are wondering what they can possibly do to escape this, this force that's coming down on them, God's word to them, Moses' words to them are, be silent. The Lord will fight for you. All you have to do is be silent. So instead of telling them to call out to the Lord, instead of saying, Israelites, get down on your hands and knees, Start jumping up and down like call for the Lord. Let him know that you're in trouble. He says, the Lord is already there to fight for you. All you have to do is be silent. So I imagine him kind of asking it like this. So the, <coughs> Moses goes up to the people who are surrounded by the Egyptians. They're coming in. He says, uh, why are you afraid, Israel? <laughs> Did not God bring us this far? Because they seem to have forgotten that the whole reason that they're even in this place is after the plagues and God has hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and then finally, finally broken Egypt. And they're like, just leave. Just leave, and not only leave, ask for the gold. Take the gold. So they're plundering Egypt. They've already left. They've plundered Egypt. And they're, they're on their way out. God has done that. Like, they've already, God has demonstrated that he's there, that he's on their side. And they say, well, why, should, why, why would we not be afraid right now? The Egyptians are coming. This is the end of the line. They're, <clears throat> <laughs> their response is, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Is this, we just traded in slavery for death? You know, at least when I was a slave, I was, you know, alive. So, um, they're confused. <laughs> and like, why wouldn't they? Be? I mean, isn't that, isn't this how we think God works anyways? Like, why, why would they be silent? It doesn't make any sense. Why not loud cries and a whole nation begging God? Why not uh, just like a, a loud heart and like, why don't you just get up and just scream and shout? And like, why not more? Like, um, isn't that what pleases God? Isn't that how God hears us? Is if we're loud enough? Is if we scream hard enough? Is if we seem somehow broken enough that that's when God's going to listen to us? So I, I want to be clear. Certainly there are times where God wants our honest cries. He hears our emotions and our distress. He's not against that at all. Not, never. But we, may, we seem to have forgotten that many times we need only to stand firm, to fear not and to be silent, and to see the salvation of the Lord which he will work for you today. For despite what the world would tell us, the strength of God is in silence. The activity of the Lord is in rest and faith is a steadfast resilience that comes upon, from waiting upon the Lord. Now this isn't fatalistic, so this doesn't mean that we give up and just say whatever happens, if it's fate, whatever. But it is different than what our culture would tell us. It is different from what we hear from society. It's different than we have to do something. And I think that the main thing we want to get across is that it hinges on a mature faith that's secure in God's promises and not anxious about whether or not God will indeed follow through with his promise. So 
I ask you, what is more faithful? Is it more faithful to beg and plead someone and constantly nag them about, can you do this? Can you do this? Will you do this? Are you sure you're going to do this? Or is it simply enough to ask and know that they will? Because God's already promised us his salvation. So maybe we, all we have to do is wait for the salvation of the Lord and to be silent in it. Because when he does call us to this silence, it would be a mistake to confuse silence for fear or to confuse rest for being idle or to confuse passivity for weakness or tolerance for compromise. Okay.